Hi, this is Dr. Nidhi Patel. Today we will review surgical technique of endoscopic lumbar interbody fusion by transcambian approach. Patient is a 55 year old lady suffering from chronic low back pain with bilateral lower limb irritating pain. Her MRI shows L4, L5 and L5S1 light eclysthesis with severe foraminal stenosis. X ray shows instability is dynamic and these spaces were severely degenerated at both the levels. So, L4 to S1 endofusion was planned under epidural analgesia because we can spare facets for this case. We begin the case by MIS pedicle screws. From the left side, we know the steps. Jump the needle is passed first through which we place the K wire and over that we insert the pedicle screws and then we introduce the rod and reduce the listhesis by distraction. Then we move to opposite side and uh, do the disc preparation and cage insertion through Cambin safety triangle. During this maneuver, we can injure exiting nerve root and that's why I prefer patient to be awake under epidural analgesia rather than general anesthesia. Sage to the disc space is made uh, under X-ray guidance by insertion of hand, 18 gauge 20 cm long needle and then a guide wire is passed through it and over that we pass the dilator over which we pass this 8 mm beveled cannula. Here we target the center of the disc because we need to remove maximum disc material. So uh, then we bring the endoscope which is uh, having 30 degree viewing angle with 3.7 millimeter internal diameter connected to the constant irrigation. We do the discectomy and uh, end plate preparation from the both sides from both the vertebra. The final view looks like this, uh, 3 o'clock being the cranial, 9 o'clock being the caudal. Deep structure is anterior annulus. We are standing on the right side and posterior annulus is at, to, at 12 o'clock. Advantage of endoscope for fusion cases that we can remove maximum disc material and we can prepare the end plates under direct vision without causing any injury to them, which is not possible by any other method. <coughs> Here we can uh, uh, look at the end plates which are showing nice petechial bleeding and we can pack the maximum amount of the bone graft as anterior as possible. Finally, we come out and widen the entry into the posterior annulus uh, so our cage can pass through it easily. Here is the posterior annulus and the epidural space. Then we remove the scope, pack the allograft uh, mixed with bone marrow. Uh, because we don't have local uh, autograph and then remove the cannula and leave the guide wire inside the disc space. Over that we insert this cage and uh, once it engages in the disc space, we remove the guide wire and hammer it down till its final position is achieved. Since at L45, posterior space was still narrow, our dilator was not uh, able to pass through it. So we decided to put the pedicle screws and distract it this work. So this was the learning lesson for us that in severely narrowed these spaces we should put the MIS pedicle screws first and uh, reduce the listhesis so we can uh, do the disc work and cage insertion without unnecessary struggle. Here are the same steps as we saw at L5S1. This is the final AP and uh, lateral x-ray for the endo cage insertion at L45 post op clinical picture. These are the step wounds and cage was uh, entered through 9 cm entry from the right side. post op x-ray shows satisfactory implant position. Patient made excellent recovery and was discharged within 24 hours after surgery. Thank you for patient watching.